Jacob, who is calling in from Texas. Jacob, what's going on? You're on Truth Wanted. Hey, Dan. Hey, uh, Emma. How y'all doing? Hello. Good. Doing awesome. Glad to talk to you, Jacob. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I, I was wanting to talk about street epistemology. I've been uh, working on it a little bit. Um, every chance that I get. And uh, I came across an issue with like, well, maybe an issue. I wanted to get y'all's opinion. But like when you um, when you interview somebody about like moral issues and they're like on the extreme end of the confidence scale, they're like 100 mm -hmm. percent. Um, I'm what I ran into one yesterday was like that it got me thinking because it was something it was an issue that I agreed with. So I was trying to take my blinders off and be objective and trying to instill doubt into something that I, I felt like he was answer, he was responding to my questions was going, you know, hey, maybe he does have a good reason to have a high level of confidence for this. But like especially where where there's like moral issues, like, you know, anything you can imagine with you know, children or like, can you justify owning somebody as property? Like those kind of things. Okay. Um, are you asking how you can change their mind when they are already dead set on an answer? Well, I, I could be wrong about the, uh, you know, there's different agendas for street epistemology, but like, um, I'm trying to back people off of a hundred percent or instill a little bit of doubt or have them say, oh, you know, if there was new information, I might change my mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So weird I, when you're, <laughs> I think you said this and I just want to make sure, cause I'll, I'll give my take on it first is that, you know, if there's some, you know, with street epistemology, you're, you're not necessarily, your goal isn't to necessarily give people doubt, right? It's more of a reflection of people's beliefs. It's like, yeah, you know, maybe there is a reason for them to be a hundred percent confident and, and you're just giving them a reflection of that. But oftentimes we find that the confidence of our beliefs maybe isn't as justified as we thought. So if we discover that that might be the case, then that's where we might want to lower that doubt. But until a reason is presented otherwise, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't allow people to have 100% confidence on something other than like, you know, maybe we wouldn't say we would have 100% confidence, but, you know, we're not talking about our beliefs. We're talking about our interlocutors' mm -hmm. beliefs, right? So that's the first thing yeah. I would say. The second thing I would say is your question is, if you wanted to instill that doubt, or maybe you think that person's confidence isn't, um, shall we say, as valid, how do you do that? Well, one, I mean, again, that is going to be contextual, but you want to figure out, firstly, why they believe what they believe. And, and uh, if anyone's saying they have 100% confidence about something, they have a reason for it. It may not be a good reason, but they're probably going to at least give some reason. You know, maybe they just say they have faith uh, in that idea of being true. If, I mean, if we're talking about morality, I just have faith. I, I believe in an intrinsic goodness because it just makes sense to me. Um, you know, that's something where you could say, like, well, is there if something didn't make sense to you or if somebody presented an example that doesn't intuitively make sense, would that lower your confidence? You know, and it's just giving examples. It's just giving suggestions as yeah. to what could potentially lower people's confidence. You don't have to give real examples that exist in the real world. It could just be hypotheticals because again, we're just kind of dealing with sort of a, a virtual barometer of people's confidence um, because, you know, they may say that they're hundred percent confident, but maybe they're, you know, they, they haven't fully examined their beliefs yet. So that's the first kind of suggestion. I don't know if maybe Hammett wants to chime in and, and give his thoughts. I don't have anything to add to that. I, I think mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't have anything there. Oh, there you go. What do you think, Jacob? Okay, yeah, because I, I was going through those hypotheticals and stuff, and he was still pretty staunch in his belief. Well, can, and, can you can uh, you maybe um, play back the conversation for us a bit? Sure. Sure. I was like online, I was on my Instagram and I just like posted a, a question. I was like, do you have any uh, deep beliefs that cause you to uh, live your life differently because of them? Like a hundred percent was yes. <laughs> okay. Question was like, would you like to have uh, your belief uh, respectfully challenged? And it was like 75% no. And I found that to be really interesting. Hmm. And then the third question was like, if you said yes twice, um, then go ahead and put your statement in here. And then, mm. um, so yeah, so the, the person just put veganism. Okay. And, uh, so I was like, okay, well, how do I, how do I make this a claim? And I was like, okay, so first I went with definitions. I was like, what is your definite, what is your personal definition of veganism? Good. I didn't want to like looking it up. 
And then uh, he was like, well, uh, I uh, want to avoid, I'm paraphrasing here, avoid sure. causing um, harm to others, unnecessary harm to others. And then I was like, oh, why is that belief important to you? And then he said, because I wouldn't want to uh, be subjected to those treatments, so I don't want to uh, be a part of doing that to others. And then so I was like, well, how how long do you think you're going to be a vegan? Like, is this something that you plan on doing for a while? And okay. then he said, until the day he dies. So now I was like, okay, that's 100%. Now I can work with that. And then okay. so I was like, well, what would you have to learn? in order for you to lower your confidence that you're actually going to die being vegan for the rest of your life. Ah, okay. Uh, That's so, interesting. Yeah, see, like, are you, sh you yeah, go ahead. The direction that I went with it. And then I started plugging in examples. I'm like, what if, you know, we come, what if new science could come out and they had determined that, uh, you need to have some nutrients from animal products or else you, you can have deteriorating brain or muscles or like, you won't live as long as a healthy life. Would that sway you? And he said no. And then I was like, well, what if an event happened where plants became unedible or unavailable for, you know, months to years long on end? Would that change your mind? And he was like, well, at that point, I've had a pretty good run. And okay. animals are going to need to eat plants in order to eat animals. So I'm out. I've always yeah. liked the question of what happens if you can, I mean, we've seen this with like the impossible burger and stuff, but what happens if you could imitate meat without using meat? Mm -hmm. um, and would you eat that? And I think I grappled with that for a while. I've tried it. It doesn't taste better to me because I'm not used to that taste as a vegetarian in general. Mm -hmm. But I remember that one, like messed with me for a while where it's like, would I even want to eat that if it was made to taste like that? And mm -hmm. part of me now is like, well, it's not that. So why would I have an ethical concern with it? And ultimately I'm just like, man, it doesn't taste that good for me, but I'm also not a meat eater who's converting to that. Yeah. But anyway, the, I, yeah. the, I wonder if you walked away from that conversation, even online or whatever, I'm wondering if you walked away with that thinking like, that person is not persuadable because I don't know that I would change my mind anytime soon like that. But that is the sort of question that would linger in my mind for a while. One thing I would have asked yeah. Jacob, I think if I was in your shoes, I think I might've asked, um, you know, you're because, because the question for him is, is, is as a practice is one of ethics. So I think I, maybe I would have focused right. more on the ethics portion of that. I know I literally just said you should give examples but in this particular situation, now that I'm reflecting on the, your conversation, maybe it should be more of a question of what would convince you that uh, going vegan isn't actually the most ethical uh, action? Or maybe that uh, there's some, you know, because if, if he's doing veganism as a point of ethics, right, if that's what's convincing him, then is there something in their ethical conscience that would convince them otherwise um, to not go vegan? Um, that maybe that it's, it would be more ethical not to. I couldn't conceive of that. Um, but maybe, you know, in, in that conversation, maybe the, some examples could come up or maybe, um, I, mean, I mean, that to me, that's what would mo make most sense. Um, if so, like you're stuck on a desert island, you need to, yeah. you need to stay alive, but yeah. by, by living, you'll Something be able like to that. do so much more good in the yeah. world. That's a good example. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? And I think about stuff I say on this show where it's like, oh, I wish I would have said this better. So I, I think what you did so far, Jacob, sounded pretty interesting. And you got somebody to talk about something. Yeah, um, those are and, interesting. The fact that anyone responded to that yeah. post and is like, yeah, I would change yeah. my mind. Let's talk about it. That's interesting. Yeah, really cool. Really that cool. Was the and, only response that I got. And I, <laughs> I was hoping, you know, I had a lot of people voting. And it was really interesting to see the ratio between, oh, yeah, I've got those beliefs and like, oh, no, I don't really want to touch them. No, thank you. Like, respectfully or not, like they were, you know, they're your beliefs. Yeah, I'm saying no, thank you. Yeah, I it's funny. I was just talking with Anthony Magnabosco this week and he just told me I don't know if he's released it yet on his channel, but he just said he had a really interesting veganism conversation in street epistemology that he oh, thinks good. might get like controversial. So I don't know. I, I don't know what he's yeah. talking about yet. He didn't tell me the details, but I, I need to check into that because it's 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 becoming more of a topic. I mean, y'all, you guys already know that. Watch this. I went vegan. Uh, it's starting in July. I've been doing that since then. 
and uh, it's been working out pretty good for me so far. Nobody's given me too much flack about it. I, I, I kind you of uh, it okay. I, jo- I joke about it here and there. I think as uh, if if uh, if I become uh, if Truth Wanted becomes a vegan exclusive show, maybe there'll be riots. <laughs> but otherwise, nobody seems to um, give you too much heck about it. So, Jacob, thanks for calling in. About Thank was you. there anything else from that conversation that I, I'm curious now because like. What do you plan to do in the future? I want to know. Are you going to use that method of posting on Instagram? Because because I, I like that. That's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm kind of dabbling with it because uh, I've been watching, you know, Street Epistemology. But I'm, like, really into them. I, like, love when a new mm-hmm. one comes out. I get all excited. And my wife is the same. And I've been throwing around the idea. I and mean, then this is, like, a long way from fruition. But I really enjoy watching those videos. And I think it would be cool to uh, go out and you know, make them or at least have conversations, but then, you know, you probably should be recording them if you're going to do that. And, uh, so long-term if like, you want I'm going, uh, yeah. I'm, recording is cool. If, if, if you think it's it. worth sharing for people and stuff, but Hey, there's no rule saying you have to record conversations to do that. I think that's sure. a weird kind of uh, thing. People think of their minds sometimes where, Oh, I have to record it. Cause it's an SC conversation. Like, no, you can just do it in your personal life. I think that that's when you get a lot of, um, you know, some people aren't comfortable on camera, so you get a lot of candid responses right. that way and stuff yeah. too. So it's cool. But anyway, well, Jacob, yeah, it, would be, it would definitely be pushing my boundaries. But yeah, I, I just think it's yeah. uh, entertaining, and I think it'd be cool to do that. That's why I'm just kind of practicing with like online. But you know, it goes a lot faster when you're okay. having a real conversation and you got body yeah. language and all that. Pandemic ruins everything. It does. It does. Yeah, it mm-hmm. really does. Um, but yeah. yeah, maybe six feet apart with some masks on, yeah. you can have some conversations. <laughs> you know, we'll see. But Jacob, thanks for calling in, man. That's a cool call. I'm I'm glad you shared that story. It you you recalled your street epistemology story way faster than I would with any of my conversations. I will say <laughs> that you gave a point by point. I guess it was fresh on your mind, but uh yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I'm curious, Henry, because I know, I mean, you, you've talked to street epistemologists. You, you, you've seen the concept. Do you have a take on street epistemology? Is it something you, you practice or what, what's up? No, because I don't like interacting with people. But <laughs> I, I do like, like the idea of just let me talk to a stranger for a while doesn't appeal. Yeah. But I do. Yeah. I appreciate watching those videos, too, because I think the thing that is is really interesting is, again, going back to the apathy thing. So many people never talk about any of this stuff. So many people, I think, want to, but who are they going to do it with? And all of a sudden, for someone to say, I don't care if you're right or wrong. This isn't a debate. I want to get to the heart of how did you come to this conclusion? What would it take to change your mind? How do you think? Period. Like, you know, that's the issue. And for so many people who haven't done that, not because they're dumb, not because they they don't want to, but because no one's ever asked them about it and to see them work through their own logic that way, that to me is really fascinating to watch for the same reason that, uh, that Jacob was mentioning. Yeah. And so I, I definitely understand the value of it. And I do like that concept mm-hmm. and it is very much, at least in Anthony's videos that I've seen, it's not a dude walking up to strangers saying, let's do this. It's, if you want to talk to me and you got a few minutes to spare, I'm right here. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, like, I, it, it's, if you were describing it to somebody who is hearing it for the first time, it does sound kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. It's like, oh, you just go up to, you, you talk to strangers about on camera for like concepts. 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> about their deeply held beliefs. Yeah. That sounds a little strange, but like, if you yeah. actually watch it, and again, as someone who's been on the other side of it, like it's it's very fun. You want you talk to the people who who've been at like they're smiling, you know, like uh, as long as people are happy with it. Sometimes, you know, and I just get back to yeah, like everyone hates small talk, right? Yeah. But there is a deep conversation with a total stranger mm-hmm. about a topic you personally have probably spent a ton of time thinking about, but literally nobody in your life circle is That's probably actually- asking about yeah. it and yeah. so here's a chance to do it and hey it's my uh jacob if you're still listening like it may be even better if it's not on camera because yes. it will make them more willing to have that conversation with you 100 100 percent. yeah i agree like whether you call it you know call it street epistemology call it socratic method call it whatever you want as long as you're having conversations with people about stuff they wouldn't otherwise think about i mean you know if that's activism to you if that's just being a good human being like i i think it's i think it's something everyone should do on some mm-hmm. level, 